Hey you, slacker you, skipping class. Now you need someone to help you through the join process and you're all confused. Well, luckily for you, I'm here to help you. So this video will be talking about joins. And in fact, the next whole group of videos will be about joins. So it's going to be a lot. Now, joins are a complex subject. They're, they can be confusing and tricky and uh, very syntactical. I don't even know if that's a word, but basically the syntax from relational database management to another relational database management system can be confusing and complex, but rather than diving in and just learning all that stuff, we're going to be talking about the concepts of what the types of joins are. And I know you might not even know what a join is yet, so you're probably thinking, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, that's what we're talking about today. So, thank you for joining me. Let's begin. So, a join is when you take something that's structured in a database in a confusing, non-user-friendly way, and you're presenting it in a user-friendly way. Now, this is done so that way we can store our data in the database in a way that's the best structured to where we protect our data integrity and it's normalized and separated across tables with the proper relationships and data types and keys and indexes and everything. But when we actually want to present that data, for example, on a web page or in a program or to the um, analyzer person who goes and analyzes and does uh, calculations on our data, or just views those calculations after the database does all the work with the analyzation. Well, that end result is often in a way, and it looks in a way that uh, is organized and structured and makes sense to us. That's the purpose of a join. So it takes a mess and puts it out in a way that looks beautiful. And this can be done over multiple tables. So for example, we could have a table here, a table here, and a table here. And these could all be three different tables with relationships between the tables. We won't get into any specifics of what kind of tables, but basically a join is going to take all of this and it's going to present us with a generated table that is more pretty, <laughs> it's more beautiful, and more structured, and it makes more sense. Now the way this is done is using foreign key, primary key connections. So, when we have these relationships between these tables, where I drew these arrows here, that represents a, uh, a foreign key connection that references a primary key. So one of these tables is the parent and one of them is the child. And we want the end result to combine them together into one. Now, when you do this, these columns that are connected are going to be indexed to make it much faster. Now, uh, when you join tables, often you replace names of things with more user-friendly names. So, for example, we could have, you know, let's say we had a comment on a website, and it says, wow, lame. <laughs> and then this is posted by uh, Caleb. Well, you can see that if you have that username here, it, it might actually be a user ID in a comment table. So for example, we can say this up here is the comment table, this is the user table, and there is a foreign key from the user ID referencing the user ID in the user table. Well, we, when we present that data on a database, we will want to replace that user ID with the actual username. So rather than having, you know, we could have it to where it's like user ID of uh, 4,582 and then you're like, oh, I don't really know what that means. Well, since this is all within the comments table, now we're going to take information from the user table and put that username instead of the user ID. That is how a join works conceptually. That's another important thing. All this Think of it conceptually. These videos are going to be helping you understand the concepts of the different kinds of joins. And throughout it, I'll be giving you some examples of how you would type that in SQL maybe, but I'm not going to be getting into the specifics. That's because joins 
are done differently from database management system to database management system. So what you just need to know is how the joins work and the expected results. And then when you start working with MySQL or SQL Server or Oracle Database or whatever else, then you can just uh, figure out how to do their joins. You will already know what the results are going to be because you understand the joins and then you just type it out and boom, you got a join there. Now this is one other thing to know that's important is all of this is uh, data manipulation. Most of what we've been talking about before is data definition. So that was in um, basically DDL. But now we're going on to DML. So DDL, data definition language, and data manipulation language. These are two parts of SQL. We all, we all talked about this in uh, the older videos, but we're on like way farther now, so you guys might have forgot this. But this is important to know, because now we already have the definition, the structure of the database. The database might already be completely designed and structured with the columns and the rows, but now we're manipulating that data to look a certain way. So by doing joins, you're not actually changing the structure of the database. You are changing the presentation of that database. That is extremely important to know. Now you may be wondering, why exactly do I need to know this? Because if I'm database designer or whatever, really all I need to do is design the structure of the database and then the database administrator or the software engineer person or whoever can go in there and use my database that I designed and created and they can do all the data manipulation stuff to fit their application, right? Well, maybe, but not likely. That's because the joins are also very important to understand because when you design your database you need to think of it in a user-friendly way and then normalize it, make it confusing, and then present it in a user-friendly way. It's kind of confusing because you start with, let's say you are really bad at database design and you're structuring a table and you have it to where it's like comments, a comment table. And within this you have a, a user name and then you have the, the comment and then maybe the blog post or video or whatever, it doesn't really matter, you can have some IDs in there. Basically you don't know what you're doing and you put the username, we'll just go with Caleb C, comment lame, then we got another one from Caleb C, cool, and Caleb C, awesome. When you look at this and you show it to your grandma, she understands it. She's like, okay. She might not understand it, but she gets, if you explain it, she might. Caleb C. posted the comment, lame. Caleb C. also posted the comment, cool. Caleb also posted the comment, oops, Caleb C. also posted the comment, awesome. But this isn't the best way to do this, because we learned about uh, data integrity, and also repeating data, because now we have this in here three times. So instead, we use a user ID, we get rid of Caleb C., and we get rid of the username, we have a user ID, and then in here we have the user ID 6, eh, let's not use that number, <laughs> 7, 7, 7, and then over here we have a user table with the uh, user ID column, which has all of our user IDs for each individual person. So we started off with this friendly design, but in reality it doesn't work because it's not normalized, there's repeating data, but it looks pretty. Once we have that, then we can break it up and normalize it, so that way we have multiple tables. So we have this table, and then we have this table over here, but that's not the only thing we do. The next thing we have to do is we have to take up those pieces of the puzzle and put them back together in a join to get the final result. So we basically want to replicate the original table we had here by using a join of our normalized database and recreating it.
So what we're going to do is we're going to take the user ID column and we're going to take uh, the user ID. Can you guys see that all, all good? It's over there. This, this will likely also have a username column, so I kind of ran out of room here. But username, and that user, name, user ID of 7 will be connected to Caleb C. Using a join, we are going to connect these two tables by basically using this foreign key, which points to 7, and finding the associated username with that user ID, and our join will look like this. Username, comment, and the, the name of the table can be, I mean, whatever you want. It can be generated table, or it doesn't even need a name if you're just putting it on a website or something. And then under the username column, it'll be um, Caleb C, and then Caleb C, and then Caleb C. And then under the comment, you're going to have lame and uh, cool, and awesome. But this wasn't just like this to begin with. We got the username from this table, and we got the comment from this table. So not only do you have to design the structure of the database, but you have to structure the joins to basically put our database back into simple language or grandma readable tables, okay? That, that's basically what we want to do. So let's say you get a job or you're working for a developer or something and they say, okay, on my website I want a table on this uh, users page where I can sign in with my username password and I can see their username, their password, their email, their uh, date they signed up and everything like that. And if I want I can go in there and edit it that way, they don't have to go in and type SQL. You're you're going to have that programmed in the um, in the uh, actual application to send that SQL. But we need to structure the tables. We need to make a join that's going to be able to combine those all to one pretty table. Which that's the job of the database designer, likely. I mean, if the applications or the database is huge, you might have someone who does the the um, designing and then someone who does the implementation and then someone who does the joins and then someone who does this other junk. But, I mean, if you're just working on your own and you gotta do everything, you're also gonna have to design the joins. And I highly, highly, highly recommend you do that before you go in and programming your application and then you're like, oh crap, I don't know how to do this or oh, my database is structured wrong. You wanna do this all beforehand. Don't rush into things because then you're gonna be like, Dude, dog, my application ain't working right. And the reason is because you didn't take the time to structure your database the right way and develop your joins. <sighs> Man. Okay. But once you got that, you're good to go. And yeah, so there are a couple different kinds of joins. There's inner joins, outer joins, cross joins, unions. There's all kinds of different things that we're going to be talking about. And we're just going to be scratching the surface of each and every one. So after these uh, next group of videos, you will be sufficient in joins. You can be like, joining, good. So yeah, catch you in the next video and stay in school or, or watch my videos, one of the two. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs>